Hi from Utah. I'm curious what your wife eats since I know you stick to pretty much the same diet today. Yeah, my wife and I eat pretty much the same stuff. You know, we, we uh, both eat a plant-based diet. We both like to eat oatmeal for breakfast or like an acai bowl maybe. She'll, she'll make those sometimes. And we both have smoothies for lunch most days. And we both eat the same thing for dinner, which is whatever she makes. And it's usually lots of veggies. So um, yeah, I mean, you know, in the beginning she thought I was in completely insane. And I was on my own with, you know, a, on a raw vegan diet, plant-based diet, and she was still eating normal American food. Um, but over time, you know, she uh, just kind of just started to warm up to it and eventually got on the wagon. <laughs> so now we're like totally in sync and uh, things are great because I have, you know, my best friend in the world is my wife and she also makes amazing dinner every night for me. So like <laughs> I'm super blessed to not have to worry about feeding myself. Um, but I eat the same thing every day for breakfast and lunch, so it's no big deal. And then she always has a great dinner. Okay, and even our leftovers are great when she doesn't make dinner. Okay, scrolling up. Whoops, I'm, okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to, you know, these comments are just bananas and they just go so fast. I'm trying to get back up to the top because I'm sure I skipped some. Um, just bear with me here. Okay, here's a good one. Um, Christine says, how does one gauge how to get adequate protein in an all fruit and vegetable diet? Well, most people only need 40 to 60 grams of protein per day. And it's so easy to get that eating fruits and vegetables because all fruit and all vegetables, all of them contain amino acids. And amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And, and so when you eat amino acids, your body takes them and it builds protein with them. So it's just easy. I mean, you, you, you get enough protein. Like I've never met anyone that was protein deficient. Like that's, that doesn't exist unless you're in a third world country and you're emaciated and you're starving and you haven't eaten for weeks, right? Then yeah, you're protein deficient. But if you're eating three meals a day loaded with fruits and vegetables, <laughs> you'll get plenty of protein. We've been brainwashed to think that, um, you know, the meat and dairy industry is, is who did it. Uh, we've been brainwashed to think, you know, you need more protein. Protein is so healthy. Animal protein. You know, beef is real food for real people. You know, what's funny is, you know, the, the, the meat, the dairy, and the egg industry are not allowed to say that their food, their, their item, like these big lobby, lobbying groups and the big Meat Producers Association of America and the National Dairy Council, they're not allowed to run TV ads that say their, their product is healthy. Did you know that? That's why they, they can't say beef is healthy, eat beef. They have to say beef is real food for real people. That's what they say. And for milk, they said, you know, milk does a body good. Like, what does that even mean, right? Uh, or now it's, see, now they can't even say that. Now they have to say got milk, right? So the egg industry, the incredible edible egg, they can't say it's healthy. They actually have gotten like, you know, slapped down by the government for saying that their their food is healthy when all the science says, no, it is not. So uh, yeah, so it's funny how the slogans they come up with that are so catchy and memorable, they're actually not allowed to tell you it's healthy. Um, anyway, that's just a little, uh, it's just a little rant, a little, little side, side, a little rabbit trail. Okay. John said, did you donate blood regularly prior to your cancer diagnosis? No, I didn't. I think I've only given blood one time, maybe twice. Um, but give, donating blood could actually reduce your cancer risk. There's some really interesting research about that. And one reason why women have lower cancer rates than men is because they menstruate. You know, But until they hit menopause, then their rates go up pretty sharply after menopause. So like menstruation actually is really good for you. And it's a way for your body to dump excess iron because excess iron in the body promotes cancer growth. And when you eat tons of meat, right? You're eating a lot of iron. You always have, when you have high iron levels, that's a problem. It's pro-cancerous. But women menstruate, so they lose iron every month. Their body sheds it. And uh, it keeps them, quote unquote, healthier than men. So that's 
you know, food for thought right there. How many vaccines have you had in your lifetime? I had vaccines as a kid, but you know, when I was a kid, I'm, I'm about to, I'm turning 40 in a few months. Okay. And when I was a kid, man, I had like 11 vaccines, you know, now it's like 60 or maybe 70. I mean, it's just gotten out of control. The amount of vaccines that they're pushing on our kids. Why are they doing it? Do we have an epidemic of disease that requires more vaccines? No, we do not. We have not had any epidemics of disease. The reason there are more vaccines is because when they introduce a vaccine, they can immediately get the government to mandate it and they make a freaking fortune, right? A fortune. So that's, that's just like, it's a home run. If you can convince the government to mandate another, add another vaccine to the vaccine schedule, you just made billions for your company. So that's why they're piling on all these new vaccines. Don't need them. Right. I'm not saying you don't need any ever. That's that's a you know, that's debatable. I don't want to get into it. Um, but the point is they it's just gotten out of control. Like we we don't my kid doesn't need 70 vaccines. <laughs> they just don't. It's crazy. So especially for stuff like chicken pox, like you know. But um, so yeah, I had the, the you know the normal ones when I was a kid, and then I had you know a few few flu shots probably as a teenager and definitely in college, probably had them a few times. So anyway, okay. Um, somebody's probably gonna ask about my kids. So like, yeah, my kids have had some vaccines. When when my first daughter was born, that was a year after I was diagnosed. Um, my, I wasn't really into vaccines. Like I was like, no, we're like, I knew people that were adults that had never been vaccinated and they were fine, you know? So I was like, I don't really think, you know, our daughter needs them, but my wife wasn't, you know, she wasn't really comfortable with no vaccines because of all the fear that, you know, everyone tries to keep projecting that like, if you don't get vaccinated, you're just gonna die or something. So. Um, so we compromised and we delayed and spaced them out. And um, yeah, I mean, our, both of our daughters, you know, they haven't had nearly as many as they're supposed to. They had a few few essential ones. Um, not even, you could debate whether they're essential, but whatever. Uh, they had a few and um, delayed them, spaced them out. And both of my kids are so healthy. No asthma, no ADHD, no ADD, no autism, no, you know, those are just the A's, right? <laughs> Uh, no, they just don't have any health problems. They don't, uh, they don't wear glasses. Not that vaccines cause, you know, eye damage, but I'm just saying my kids are just healthy kids, no problems at all. So, uh, you know, uh, but they're surrounded by other kids that have lots of health problems. That's what I'm saying. Right. Kid, kid, lots of kids at school taking pharmaceutical drugs, like little kids taking pharmaceuticals, like for all kinds of problems. Just, it's crazy. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, next question. Just wondering, okay, Marie Christine says, hi Chris, just wondering what the family eats together. For example, do your kids eat pasta? Yeah, we eat pasta sometimes. Whole grain pasta, rice pasta, love it. Yep, definitely. Um, not every day and not necessarily even every week. But uh, yeah, sometimes we do have pasta. And um, we like it. <laughs> Uh, so like my wife will do uh, this dish with, um, pasta and she'll do, uh, she makes up some kind of like amazing, like garbanzo bean. Um, it's, you know, instead of like tomato sauce, it's like garbanzo beans and peas and olives and cilantro. It's like so good. It's really awesome. Anyway. Okay. Um, did my wife change her diet after me? Yeah, it, but it took a while. It took, it took years for my wife to like really get on board. Years, okay, years. So for, for those of you watching and you know, you feel like you're all alone and every, you know, people close to you think you're crazy and, and they like won't, you know, get on the healthy train with you. It's okay, like just, just don't, don't be annoying. <laughs> you know, I know you care about people around you, but don't be annoying, just take care of yourself and Remember, time changes things, okay? Time changes things. And so it may take months, it may take a few years, but eventually people around you be like, you know what, you, you're, you're really healthy. Like, you look great, you know, your skin looks so good. You know, what are you doing? And then you can say, well, this is what I do, you know? And then you have the opportunity to, to help people. So, you, you know, sometimes it just takes a while for people to even believe that you're not just on some, uh, fad diet or you're just on a kick or whatever, you know? So 
just don't sweat it. <clears throat> cayenne is awesome to take, Sherry. Yes, cayenne's amazing. Uh, put put cayenne on everything, right? I love to put cayenne on food I eat. I'll spice up lots of food that I eat. Um, you can take it in supplement form too. <clears throat> what do I think about Texas superfoods? I don't think about Texas superfoods. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Okay. <clears throat> What's the best way to get protein on a plant-based diet? I already answered this one, eat fruits and vegetables. You're, you'll get protein. Now, the highest, you can Google highest sources of protein in the plant-based diet. I mean, beans are wonderful sources of protein. So obviously nuts and seeds and beans are the highest source, but I don't think you even have to have those every day. Um, you can just eat a variety of fruits and vegetables. You'll get protein, you'll be fine, you'll feel great, you'll lose weight if you're overweight. You know, it's funny, and I, obviously I don't know this person, but. <clears throat> I have people ask me all the time, they're like, but I'm worried I'm not going to get enough protein. And these people are, you know, routinely, the person asking me this is overweight or obese. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, you've been eating way too much protein. That's why you're overweight. Like, stop worrying about getting enough protein. You need less protein. Protein fuels weight gain when you're eating tons of meat and dairy. So anyway, okay. There's another protein question, but I already answered it. Okay. Uh, yeah, Cindy says, with a plant-based diet, do you add B12? I've always read there's a danger of not having enough of that vitamin. Yes, if you don't have enough B12, you run the risk of being sickly. But it's very hard to get into a dangerously low B12 situation. Okay, so I do supplement with it. Not every day. I mean, like maybe once a week or every few weeks, I would do a little B12 spray. You know, so not a big deal. And I'm not a pure vegan anyway. So, I mean, I probably don't even need it. Well, I, I take that back. A lot, of, a lot of people, even if they eat meat and dairy, are low in B12. So it is a very helpful supplement to take. I should back up because I'm actually talking out two sides of my mouth right now. But... Um, but yeah, it's helpful. Um, are you going to get dangerously low and sick? Probably not. But could you use a little more in your, in your life, even if you eat meat and dairy? Probably. Okay. This is a great one. Anna says, hi, Chris. How did you find enough time in a day to do everything recommended in your modules? Busy moms never seem to have enough time. So, well, a lot of the stuff on the modules is just information, right? It's not stuff you have to do. It's just me trying to educate you about changes, you know, thinking differently and running your life in a different way. So if you're talking about specifically just like about eating, well, I mean, you know, I eat three meals a day. I mean, that everybody eats three meals a day. And so I, I had to plan ahead and make sure my meals were healthy. The thing about eating healthy is you have to plan ahead. Most people don't. Most people eat on the run, right? So they rush out the door to work. They're grabbing some like, you know, coffee and like a muffin or a scone at Starbucks, right? And then lunch is like whatever the closest fast food is. And then dinner is like fast food on the way home. Okay, so that person did not plan to eat healthy. They just ate on the run. So um, when you plan to eat healthy, it's just very simple. You're just like, okay, I'm gonna eat the same thing every day for breakfast. You, you get your healthy breakfast sort of dialed in. You're like, this is my breakfast eat it every day. And then lunch, same thing. This is my lunch. This is super healthy. I know it's healthy. I don't need to have a special like taste, like sensation um, every day for lunch. I just need to have something that I like and I know it's super good for me and that's what I eat every day. And then dinner, you can mix it up. But again, you have to plan ahead. So that's important. Um, and you, you know, every person's different. We all have different schedules. So <clears throat> it takes planning. You just have to sit down and actually a lot of people are just kind of running, running, um, you know, they're not scheduled, they're not organized, and they're just running around like crazy, right? And they're very reactive to what's happening in their life. And so you just have to sit down and kind of look at your schedule and say, okay, like I'm going to make a plan to eat healthy this week, right? Here's how I'm going to do it. Like you, you can do it. You can do this. Like, anyone can do it. It just takes a few minutes to sit down and just focus on your week and make a plan. Okay. <clears throat> Kathy says, I find it hard to do a plant-based diet with allergies to legumes and tree nuts. 
how do I get some protein? <laughs> like every other question is protein. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, if you're allergic to nuts, you're fine. Don't eat nuts. If you're allergic to beans, don't eat beans. Eat potatoes, eat rice, eat tons of fruit, eat tons of the other vegetables. You'll, you'll get plenty of protein. You'll be great. Okay. You know, just exclude the stuff. It, it, don't worry. Just like toss protein out the window. Like you don't need protein. Here, let me get let me get on a protein rant. I've already talked about it, but here's another rant. This is going to blow your mind. <clears throat> At what point in a human's life do they need the most protein? At what point? Right? It's when you're a baby. When you're a baby, you are growing so fast. You need so much protein, don't you? Because like, you know, you're doubling in size, right? From like this big to this big and then here. So babies and children need the most protein, but babies especially because they grow so fast. And guess what? Mother's milk is only about 10% protein. The rest of it's sugar and fat. So you don't need much protein, right? If you don't need much protein as a baby, you don't need much protein as an adult, <laughs> right? You need carbohydrates, okay? Carbohydrates. And by the way, <clears throat> fat is food for growth. That's why there's so much fat in breast milk. You don't need it. You just need carbohydrates. That's what your body runs on. It's the most efficient fuel, carbohydrates, not white sugar, not white flour, right? Fruit and starches, okay. <clears throat> Thoughts on hydrogen water? Yeah, it could be helpful, um, but you know, there is a category of products and devices that are I tend to shy away from because they're very expensive and not accessible for most people. So that'd be like the Kangen water machine, the you know the ionized water, the hydrogen water. That you know, there's a lot of expensive therapeutic stuff out there that you can spend tons of money on, thousands and thousands of dollars. But um, like I, I kind of avoid that stuff because I think it's a distraction. Because I think the most important thing you need to spend your money on if you're trying to get well is your diet, number one. Guess what? I don't have anything to sell you. I don't have, I'm not selling blueberries, right? <laughs> like I'm not selling you food, I'm just telling you to eat it. So number one is an organic plant-based diet. Organic food's a little more expensive, so okay, spend your money on that. Number two, filter your water with a Berkey water filter or something equivalent like reverse osmosis. The Berkey is my favorite, it's portable. I made a video about it. You can Google uh, crispy cancer Berkey, B-E-R-K-E-Y if you wanna see the video, but clean water, and then you need a, a, gr a juicer, so invest in a juicer. Uh, I love the Champion, but there's lots of great brands. And then invest in a really great blender like a Vitamix or a Ninja or a Blendtec. Okay, that's where I tell people to spend money first, not on a Kangen water machine or a hydrogen water machine or a you know or a you know <laughs> five thousand dollars sauna for their house. You know, like if you if you have unlimited funds, then sure buy all that buy all that fun alternative therapy all this alternative therapy devices. But uh, I didn't have that luxury when I was sick, and so <clears throat> I just had to focus on the essentials, right? And, uh, and that was food, right? That was like nutrition. That was the foundation of my health and healing. It's, it's still the foundation of health and healing for every person in the world. <laughs> so uh, clean water, plant-based diet, organic, of course, and then, um, you know, some good kitchen equipment uh, and even replacing your pots and pans with like ceramic coated cast iron is a good idea to get rid of all the nonstick stuff. Uh, and even stainless steel can leach cadmium um, and nickel into your food. So, you know, a glass teapot and like ceramic coated, uh, like Le Creuset or a Lodge, or I think even Martha Stewart has some, Rachel Ray probably has some now. We found some on, uh, that are some of my favorites. I'll make a video about this at some point, but I've got a couple of pots and pans that we've had for years and they went out of business, but um, and I actually bought them through Mercola like years ago in like 2004. Um, that we still use, but I got some recently that are lightweight cast iron that are, you know, ceramic coated. And we, we found them on uh, like worldmarket.com. So yeah, you know, look those up. <clears throat> D says, do you ever cheat and eat comfort food or junk food? So I don't like the word cheat because cheat is negative and it makes you sound like you're a criminal. <laughs> okay. So let's not call it cheating. Because psychologically, that's not good for you, right? You're going to feel guilty if you're cheating, 
If you're a cheater, you feel guilty, right? There's no such thing as cheating on a diet, right? You're just making choices, right? You're making healthy choices or are you making not so healthy choices? The not so healthy choices I would call recreational food, okay? Let's just call it that. Pizza, ice cream, cheeseburgers, waffles, right? All the stuff they used to sell like at carnivals. <laughs> yeah, this is recreational food. Even soft drinks, right? You used to have to go to an ice cream parlor to get a scoop of ice cream, right? Now we've got like tubs of it in our freezers. So like one scoop of ice cream every once in a while isn't gonna hurt you. Like a soda from the soda fountain every once in a while isn't gonna hurt you. But we've, you know, our pantries are stocked with Coke, Diet, Dr. Pepper, Sprite, you know, every brand. And then we've got, so we got the, the chips and the soda and the ice cream and the, I'm starting to sound like Bill Cosby. Uh, and so that's the problem, right? It's not the every once in a while little treat that you should be able to enjoy. Now, if you, if you have cancer and you're trying to get well, I say go, you need to be 100% hardcore and cut it all out because it's a slippery slope and you can get sucked back into eating junk food. So stay away. But for the normal average person, if you're eating a plant-based diet, tons of fruits and vegetables every day, sure, yes, you have freedom to go enjoy something. Go take the kids out for an ice cream every once in a while. I do that, yes, I do that. Um, we have pizza every once in a while. Like we do normal stuff. It's just such a tiny fraction of my diet compared to the standard American diet, the standard Western diet. It's not enough to hurt me. Like I just don't believe it is when it's less than a percent of your diet. So, um, I mean, it's less than less than a percent of my diet. It's so, so small. But anyway, yeah, it's fun to go out and enjoy recreational food. Okay, that's what it is. And don't look at it like cheating. Just look at it like something that you have permission to do to enjoy. And you've earned that right to enjoy it because you've been eating so well and taking such good care of yourself. Hope you guys like that answer. <clears throat> okay. Uh, organic soy. I think soy is great. Don't have any problem with it. Organic soy definitely because most soy is GMO. Uh, we eat soy from time to time. It's just a bean. Like people are so crazy about soy. But you know, there's a lot of studies on soy consumption and cancer, especially breast cancer. And the women that consume the most soy have the lowest rates and the best survival rates. I mean, but still there's all these bloggers that are like, soy is evil. Like, you know, the phytoestrogens are going to make your cancer worse. Then they aren't, okay? We have real science about soy and it's just a bean and legumes are healthy. So, like, it's fine. Soy is not going to hurt you. Now, you know, the processed soy is not a great idea, but like just whole soybeans, edamame, like organic, enjoy it. Nothing wrong with it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Trista says, are you speaking nationally anytime? You know, I turn down most speaking invitations because I love my little girls with my whole heart and my wife, and I don't like to be away from them. So I could be on the road, you know, <laughs> pretty much nonstop if I wanted to. <clears throat> uh, and it would be great. I would enjoy it. I love to travel, but I don't want to miss my kids growing up. Don't want to miss my family. And uh, so no, like I don't really speak very much. There's a few key events I'll speak at. So like, if the Truth About Cancer Ultimate Health Symposium, if they do that again, Ultimate Live Symposium, if they do that again in October in Dallas, I'll go speak there. Um, I'm speaking in London in June. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I've got on the calendar for the year. You know, so, something else might pop up here or there, but maybe Cancer Control Society in September. That's in Los Angeles. But yeah, you know, I just... I just don't like to be away from my family. Okay. <clears throat> Someone said Google plant-based protein and you will find the answer lentils, beans, and grains. Lentils are so great. Lentils are amazing. Eat more lentils. We love lentils. Um, and beans, of course, we love black beans, garbanzo beans, black-eyed peas, green beans, all types of beans, soybeans. Uh, you know that the bean is the single food, the legume of all foods on earth that is associated with the longest living people on earth. It's the only food that's associated with longevity. In other words, the longest pe living people around the world on all continents 
also happen to eat the most amount of beans. That food that the paleo people have been telling you is like terrible for you is what the longest living people eat the most of. Next. <clears throat> Going out to eat, what to order? Great question. So I order plants. I'm just like, hey, can I eat that plant in the corner? <laughs> no. Um, so if we go out to, let's just say it's my, my dad's birthday. He had a birthday recently. We went out to dinner and we went to a nice restaurant and I looked at the menu and I ordered <clears throat> four or five vegetable sides off the menu, right? I had green beans, asparagus. I think they might have had some kind of collard green situation um, and I don't know potatoes or something and that's what I had it was great you know I don't remember if I had a salad or not but that's what I do I just I'll just look at the menu if it's, you know if it's a nice restaurant I just look at the menu and I, I order the vegetables no they're not organic it's okay you know um, most of what I eat is organic every once in a while it's not it's all right so uh, and the vegetables you know the one the one <laughs> the one drawback is like restaurant food is always way over salted and so a lot of times I forget, even though I know this and I talk about it all the time, I'll still forget that uh, to, to ask them to like not salt it. And so, and sometimes they make big batches, so it's already pre-salted and you know, nothing they can do about it. But yeah, it usually comes out and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so salty, this is crazy. Cause we just gotten away from salt. We just, you know, we just use a tiny little bit and the American palate is like, has just been destroyed by so much sugar and salt that now we have to put tons of sugar and salt on everything. Um, and when you break your salt addiction and your sugar addiction, then all of a sudden foods that you didn't think were that sweet are super sweet and foods that you didn't think were that salty are like, what in the world is like, this is crazy. So, um, but anyway, that yeah, that's, that's my restaurant strategy. Just always looking for a plant-based option. Like when I'm on the road, I'll look for Jason's Deli. They got a great salad bar. I'll look for a Chipotle. I'll go in and just get a big veggie bowl or a veggie burrito. Um, um, those are my easy. Just you know, Starbucks has oatmeal, so I can drop into any Starbucks, get a green tea, and and usually two oatmeals for breakfast if I'm on the road. That's my just easy go-to if I'm like in a pinch and like, all right, got to find something to eat. That's just super simple. So. And then dinner, yeah, again, if it's a nice restaurant, I just eat the veggies. <clears throat> How many times a week do you go to the grocery store? Well, like once a week, you know. I mean, we just, I, I've been doing it so long, I just kind of know what I need um, for the week. So I would just get what I need and put it in the fridge and, and it's fine. I buy a lot of frozen berries and uh, at Costco. So like we'll go to Costco and I'll get a bunch of big bags of frozen mixed organic berries and I'll get the big bag of organic um, like kale and mixed greens and I'll put all that in the freezer and then that's like my smoothie stuff, right? So that's that's super easy. And then, you know, we, we buy produce and stuff and put it in the fridge and, uh, and then eat it, <laughs> you know, hopefully before it goes bad. <laughs> Sometimes it goes bad on us and we like, we're like, oh man, but uh, that happens to everybody, I think. Okay, unless you're single. I think single people are really the most efficient. Like nothing goes to waste in a single person's fridge. <laughs> All right, at least not when I was single. Okay, is it okay to eat oatmeal? Well, I think it's okay. I eat oatmeal every day, every morning, uh, organic oats. And there's a recipe in Square One. There's a recipe on crispycancer.com, how to supercharge your oatmeal. Uh, yeah, oats are fantastic. It's just a great food. It's gluten-free. Uh, if you have a gluten issue, oats are fine. And um, oats will keep you alive forever. <laughs> I mean, it's just, a, just such a super nutritious food. Okay. <clears throat> Looking for another question. Um, Berkey Mountain Valley or Smart Water? Berkey, all the way. The Berkey water filter, all the way. Okay. This is a travel question, but I kind of answered it already. Um, now, I will add, a lot of times I will pack, I will pre-make my oatmeal and travel with it. So I'll put all the stuff I like to put in my oatmeal. So I'll put flax seed, chia seed, hemp seed, cinnamon, allspice, dried fruit like uh, black currants or apricots or figs 
and I just like make a bunch of single servings, put it in a Ziploc, and I'll throw a bunch of Ziplocs in my bag. I got <laughs> I got stopped at air, airport security one time because they I don't know what they thought I had a bunch of drugs in there or something. They opened it up and they're like, "What's this?" I'm like, "It's my oatmeal." <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. So I I try to pack if I'm a, if if I'm really like on it and I'm like you know ahead I'm planning ahead then I'll make time to, to pre-make however many oatmeal servings I need for my trip and I pack it and then I'm just like super happy. And then, then all I have to find is boiling water. So every hotel room has a coffee maker. I can boil water right there, bam, get a bowl from the uh, hotel kitchen, right? And just have an, a bowl and hot boiling water and throw it in the oatmeal. Or you can, or I'll, if I have bottled water, um, I'll put it in the oatmeal and let the oatmeal soak overnight. And then in the morning, you know, it's like totally ready uh, and I'll eat it cold. So that's the way I do that. And then I already talked about how I, what I, what I do for lunch and dinner. You know, sometimes if I'm, you know, if I'm on the run or I'm in a pinch and I'm like, I don't see any good options, I'll just eat a bunch of fruit. Like I was at a conference recently and I was like looking through the, the little kind of like deli they had. And I was like, I don't know. I'm like not really feeling any of this. They had like a few, they had like a veggie wrap, but it was like one of those veggie wraps where, um, you know, it's like a tortilla and it's just like stuffed with lettuce. <laughs> and you're like, like, that's not enough to, sustain me so um but they had bananas so i bought the entire bunch of bananas and i ate like six or seven bananas for lunch done like great i'm happy belly's full feel good lots of energy so easy right bunch of bananas i can i can do that anytime so um yeah that's my other go-to i do that in airports a lot too because a lot of the airport you know a lot of little airport places uh are selling bananas so i just you know buy a bunch of bananas and eat them okay <clears throat> Melissa says, you mentioned breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Do you have snacks? I don't really have snacks very often because I eat big plant-based meals and they fill me up and they give me lots of energy and I feel great until it's time to eat the next meal. So I don't find myself like craving and like, oh, I need a snack because I'm so hungry. Like I just don't, yeah, I don't, I I just don't. Um, but I've, I've got my, my own little diet dialed in. So, uh, but if you feel like you need a snack, eat fruit, right? Eat an apple. I mean, it's awesome. An apple will fill you up and it's only a hundred calories. So you know, the apple won't make you fat. <laughs> That's not possible. But um, yeah, the best snack in the world is fruit. Absolutely the best. So what, whatever it is, eat two or three oranges, eat an apple, eat uh, eat some dates, eat some figs, eat some apricot, eat like anything you like, like, you know, eat fruit. It's great. Fresh is best. Dried not as, is not quite as good because, you know, you're not getting that, you're not getting the water that's so beneficial in fruit. Um, you can always drink water when you eat it. But anyway, that's that's the best snack on earth. Just snack on fruit. And if you have a sweet tooth, eat sweet fruit. It satisfies your craving. Okay. <clears throat> Next question. Some a lot of these I've already answered. That's why I'm scrolling through. Uh, is it okay to eat brown rice? I eat brown rice. I think it's great. You know, organic's best, of course. But our favorite is black and brown. I mean, black and red rice. So if you've never had black rice or red rice, you're in for a treat because it is delicious. And uh, so that's actually my two preferred forms of rice, black rice and red rice. Get some red rice and black beans. Oh man, look out. It's good. Okay. Okay. Uh, Laura says double mastectomy stage one, no lymph nodes. Well, that's good. Onco oncologist wants me to take chemo. I refuse. What do I do now? Get my square one course. The link's right there. Burp like right above my head, go through it. It will give you the roadmap, like to change your whole life, your diet, supplementation, your attitude, your emotions. Like just trust me on this, okay? There's 3,000 people, 3,000 comments on the module one watch page that will tell you how great this course is. All right, that's what you need to do. I mean, it'll t that's why I built it. I built the course for, for cancer patients and for people that are under prevention, but for cancer patients, they're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. That's, this is exactly what you do. There's nothing like it anywhere. Okay. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, Julie says, you mentioned uh, in square one that you have an air purifier in your bedroom. Which brand do you recommend? We have an Auric air purifier, but you know, I'm not convinced it's that good. I mean, so let me just be honest, right? That's why I don't like promote it. I don't know that it's that great. I mean, we really use it more for a sound machine than anything else. Um, and uh, and I've really looked, you know, I've spent a fair amount of time researching air purifiers and just keep coming up short with what I think, you know, like, I don't know. They all seem to be missing research. Like they all seem to be making claims with no research behind it, right? And so I'll, every time I dig into a, a company or a brand, I'm like, where's the, where's the research? Like, it's pretty easy to prove that you're removing toxins and you know, pollutants from the air. I mean, you can do that in a lab anywhere. Like, where have you done that? Where is it? Where's the research? So, um, yeah. <laughs> So I'm st I'm still looking, but I actually did I did find one and ordered it. Um, I actually pre-ordered it. It looks amazing, and I'm really excited about it. And it hasn't come yet, and um, I actually think I forgot the name of it because <laughs> I pre-ordered it like months ago. Oh, I might think of it in a minute. So uh, anyway, man, this is driving me nuts. Don't you hate when you can't remember something and you it's like important and you need to say it? <laughs> okay, I'll come back to it. it I know it's going to come to me in a minute. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, Angela says, thoughts on organic free-range eggs and raw honey. Yeah, so organic free-range eggs are quote-unquote healthier than commercially produced eggs. But um, I still don't see the egg as like a food that you need. Um, and eggs have ridiculous amounts of cholesterol. And I know we've been bombarded with people lately saying like, cholesterol's great. You need cholesterol. You don't. You don't need it. The longest living people around the world have the lowest cholesterol, especially the rural Africans. So, you know, and the funny thing is, is in, in America and a lot of other Western nations, they keep raising the bar on what healthy cholesterol is because we're so unhealthy that our average cholesterol is crazy high. And so now when someone, they did, now they're basically doctors are saying, well, as long as your cholesterol is under 200, you're okay. That's like crazy. My cholesterol is 115, 115. The Framingham Heart Study found that basically anyone with cholesterol under 150 was basically heart attack proof. So you wanna get your cholesterol under 150 and eggs are the highest source of cholesterol, period, that you can eat. So yeah, I you know I might eat eggs every once in a while because I do like the taste of eggs. Like every once in a while, I kind of crave it and I'll have some eggs, but it's rare. It might be once a month, right? So and yes, organic free range. That's that's the way to go for sure. Um, raw honey, I think, is wonderful. I don't eat it every day, but like every once in a while, I don't know if I have occasion to put honey on something, I might. Um, I might put it on my oatmeal every once in a while. Um, but yeah, I mean, honey's kind of an amazing food, you know. Like bees make it. <laughs> so it's pretty awesome to think about. Um, and I don't have any problem with like bees being mistreated by beekeepers. <laughs> you know, like whoever thinks that like honey is like uh, comes from like mistreated bees is an idiot. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and say it because bees, you know, if you mistreat the bees, they won't make honey. Like they're not going to be only, only happy bees make honey. So anyway. Um, <clears throat> that's why I never understood veganism because they think like, you know, the vegan rule is you can't eat honey because it comes from an animal as if that animal is harmed in some way or their life is like somehow less, um, you know, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. They're just like, they, they have this hard slave life making honey for you. It's just not true. <laughs> Bees love to make honey. That's like what they do. Okay. So they're either going to be making it in a honeycomb in the middle of the woods that you'll never find, or they'll make it in, you know, a honeycomb that you build for them. Okay. Uh, Bonnie says, help, best kickstart on square one for lots of weight to lose. Oh, this is so easy, Bonnie, so easy. Raw fruits and vegetables, 100% raw, right? That's the rule. Anything you want to eat, if it's a raw fruit or vegetable. So giant salads are awesome. And don't use oil though on the salad. Just use, um, get Bragg berry dressing. It's amazing, has no oil in it. Uh, or get Bragg uh, apple cider vinegar dressing with no oil because they have an oil-free one. 
um, and or squeeze lemon juice on there or just put your own apple cider vinegar on there. And um, even balsamic vinegar is okay. Giant salads, as much fruit as you want. You could do all fruit, 100% fruit all day, every day. And the weight is gonna melt off of you because fruit fills you up, it's super nutritious, but it's low in calories. I mean, it's just very low. And it's the calorie dense foods that are working against you. What are the most calorie dense foods? Oils, number one. Absolutely, without a doubt, oils. <clears throat> Think about this. A tablespoon of oil, any oil, olive oil, sesame oil, motor oil, <laughs> kidding on that. A tablespoon of oil is 120 calories. Guess what? That's the equivalent of like one and a half to two bananas. Like you can eat two bananas and it's the same calories as a tablespoon of oil. So it's really easy to overdose on oil and get way more calories than your body needs and it's gonna store those calories as fat. So the other super dense calorie foods are meat and dairy. So when you cut out meat, dairy and oils, guess what happens? You, even, you can eat as much food as you want, fruits and vegetables, no limits, no rules, just stuff your face and watch the weight come off. Try it, believe me, do it, just watch. Just watch, even the, the first week, you're gonna lose weight. And in a month, you're gonna be like, whoa, like where'd it go? So, you know, the biggest challenge is you gotta stick with it, that's the, that's the thing. You make a commitment to do it, you stick with it, and you will see amazing results eating plants. You'll feel better, you'll lose weight. If you have a high blood pressure, it'll come down. If you have high cholesterol, it'll come down. If you have hypertension, it'll resolve. Like amazing things happen when you do this. Okay. When I say vegetables, yes, greens. Vegetables, yes, vegetables are all vegetables. Absolutely, okay. Linda says, which cancer clinic in Mexico would you go to for treatment for prostate cancer that is spread? Chipsa, Gerson Institute, or Northern Baja? Well, I'll tell you, wouldn't go to Gerson Institute because it's kind of a dump. Uh, Chipsa and Northern Baja are great. So I would contact both and um, see which one you like the best, see which one really resonates with you that you, you know feel strongly about, and uh, that's what I would look into. Okay, I got a lot of like angry faces of people are not happy that I said I don't like Gerson Institute. I don't understand. Like, have you ever been to the Gerson Institute clinic? It's a dump. I'm sorry. It just is. It's dumpy. It's not well run. Charlotte's not involved. Uh, wouldn't go. Wouldn't, rec anybody, it rec wouldn't recommend anybody go. The doctors don't care. And the staff is like, you know, I just hear reports back all the time for people that go and they're like, oh, it was awful. So um, there's people that went years ago that had great experiences, but it's just not the same anymore. Um, but Chipsa is on top of their game, and so is Northern Boss, Baja. And by the way, you get additional therapies. Gerson Institute, all they're going to give you is juices and potatoes and <laughs> Hippocrates soup and juices and coffee enemas. That's it. Like, you go to Chipsa or Northern Baja, you're going to get IV therapies. You're going to get, you know, uh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, long list of integrative therapies. So if, if Dr. Gerson was alive today, I think he'd be doing more than just juices and soup and coffee enemas. So anyway, you know, he died in 1955. The protocol is amazing, but we've learned so much more since then. Like, let's incorporate the new stuff. Okay, that's the end of my rant on that. I, I've, you know, great respect for, for Dr. Gerson, great respect for Charlotte. I just said it's the end of the rant, but now I'm still talking about it. Um, but again, that's a two totally different things. The, the actual clinic itself in Mexico, not great. The Institute and Charlotte and all the all the good thing good, good they've done for the world, admirable, love it. Like cannot say enough good things about Charlotte um, carrying her, her father's legacy forward. <clears throat> okay, I mean Gerson is is you know the influence that he had impacted me and it's why I'm still alive. Okay, <clears throat> what am I? What do I recommend for salad dressing? Apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, lime juice, bragberry. Um, you know, you can use a tiny little bit of oil with it. It's okay, like a little bit. But I, what I said earlier is if you're trying to lose weight, <clears throat> stay away from the oils. It's just, it's just concentrated calories. It's gonna work, um, it's gonna work against you. <clears throat> but oils are, they're, they're processed food, right? Oils are not a whole food. They're extracted and they're processed, right? That's not a whole food. A coconut is a whole food. Coconut oil is not. Like you have to have a machine to get oil out of a coconut, right? You have to have, if you think about like oils used to be really expensive, 
because it took a lot of manual labor to squeeze oil out of olives, for example, or out of anything. And oils were very, very expensive. And we're talking about back in Bible times, right? Now, because we have industrial machinery, we're just like crushing oil out of everything. Like, oh, we, got this, we can make oil out of anything now. And it's just unnatural. Like you don't, it's, you know, like corn oil, for example, is in every junk food, right? And you would, you know how hard it is to get oil out of corn kernels? Like you could never do that on your own. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, most oils are just, again, they're, it's not a whole food. You stick with whole foods. Okay. Um, Sonny says, I love the rabbit trail. I'm not even sure which rabbit trail, that rabbit, rabbit trail, rabbit trail you were talking about, but uh, thank you. Do I use natural beauty and cleaning products? Well, what do you think? Uh, I, I do, I do, but not really beauty products. I mean, like I'm a dude, so I'm not going to be like putting like creams and lotions and stuff on my face, <laughs> but my wife does. Um, I, <clears throat> my routine is really simple. And by the way, there's a, there's a, Healthy Home Guide in Square One, another shameless plug. There it is. Go, go buy it. There's a Healthy Home Guide that has a complete list of all of the beauty products, skin products, healthy, clean, green, non-toxic home products that uh, are verified, tested, non-toxic that you should use instead of the toxic crap that most of us buy at, you know, Walgreens or Kroger or Sam's or whatever. So, um, but anyway, like my routine is really simple. Like healthy skin comes from a healthy diet, number one. If you, buy, if you use no products ever, if you eat a super healthy diet, tons of fruit, tons of vegetables, you'll have beautiful glowing skin. Um, now, the second thing is I, uh, I use a product called Anne Marie Skincare Aloe Herb Cleanser, which is a face cleanser. It's like, it's a face wash, but it doesn't, it's not soapy, it doesn't really foam up. And it's made with aloe and some herbs. I don't even know what the herbs are. And, uh, and I use it to shave. That's my only thing I put on my face, you know? Um, but my wife has, she, she loves, you know, girly stuff. And so she has tons of products. Um, and Marie skincare, beauty counter, um, <clears throat> Aubrey organics, hundred percent pure. She's got a lot of stuff like that. <clears throat> okay. Somebody asked can, about research on eggs. Go to nutritionfacts.org and just type in eggs in the search bar. And Dr. Michael Greger will blow your mind about egg science, <laughs> okay? Uh, that's, what, that's what anyone should do. If you have any, like, if you think I'm crazy for saying eggs are not healthy, just go to Nutrition Facts and he will lay it out for you. That guy's got, has compiled more nutritional research science than any other website on planet Earth. And he makes great videos and explains everything really well. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Ruby says, what brand of black seed oil do you like? There are two brands that um, that I like, and I'm not an expert on it. You know, I just, there's like only two brands that I really know of actually. So it's not like I've like narrowed it down to, I only really know of two that um, one of them is Amazing Herbs, that's on Amazon. And the other one is a Dr. Fit, Dr. Roby Mitchell, MD, uh, his own brand of black seed oil. And then they may be the same, I mean, who knows? But um, yeah, those two. I've got a big thing of, uh, of Dr. Fit, the Roby Mitchell black seed oil that I've been taking. So Amazing Herbs is kind of nice because they they sell in, in, in capsule, gel caps, um, which is good like for a small sort of prevention dose that's easy to take if you really can't stand the taste of a teaspoon or a tablespoon of black seed oil because it is, it's, it's seriously disgusting. <laughs> like you'll see, <laughs> like anytime someone comes over, it's sort of like a fun, fun thing for me to do. It's like, have you ever had black seed oil? <laughs> and, and like make them try it and watch their face. Okay. Uh, all right. Judy says, you've encouraged my spirit and resolved to live the best way I can. Thank you. You're welcome. That's what I'm trying to do here. Okay. Do, oh, Tony says, do cooked foods have vitamins? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Now, um, I... When you cook vegetables, for example, you might lose about 15% of the, 
uh, roughly of water soluble vitamins and minerals okay so you might lose a little bit from cooking doesn't destroy the vitamins and in fact but what happens is cooking uh, reduces food and you end up eating more so you would eat more cooked spinach than you would eat raw spinach right if you've ever cooked spinach you take this huge bag of spinach and you cook it it's like like where'd it go so what happens is you end up eating more when it's cooked and so you actually there's no net loss uh, and cooking actually makes some nutrients certain vitamins and minerals more absorbable in your body so it's just great to eat a variety of raw and cooked food very simple I eat um, more cooked food now than I did I eat about 30% raw so I eat a raw meal every day um, but I eat more cooked food now because I have a super high metabolism you can tell I'm thin my, my 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 body just burns through calories like crazy so I need more cooked food because cooked food is higher in calories than raw food because again it reduces and you end up eating more so um, yeah that's it cooked foods have vitamins cooked veggies have vitamins yes they're great <clears throat> What's the breast? What's the breast? What's the best brand of turmeric? This is what uh, this Carol asks. My favorite brand. It's hard to say best, <clears throat> but my favorite brand, based on lots of research and reading and really looking into to the studies that these turmeric companies publish, is uh, San Giovanni Bosmeric. It's turmeric. Boswellia, which is frankincense, ginger, and black pepper extract in one, you know, capsule. That I think is the best. That's my favorite. And you can get it at betterwayhealth.com. It's called Boss Merrick SR. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, I, that was formulated by Dr. Sunil Pai, who's a friend, and he was on the Truth About Cancer series, multiple uh, versions, seasons of that. And some of you would probably recognize him if you saw him. And he's a brilliant guy. And um, he formulated this. And the research behind it is just top notch. And uh, I like it a lot. So that's that's my favorite. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> um, Jan says, last night you interviewed Patrick who said, fat feeds cancer cells, not sugar. Well, I didn't interview him last night. That was like last year <laughs> but uh patrick vickers at northern baja yeah a cancer does feed on fat if it, it can feed on fat and sugar i mean all kinds of stuff so um yeah the the gerson therapy is very low fat it's tons of plants and um juices lots of carbs and uh extremely low fat they're only allowed to have a little bit of flax oil that's the only fat they're allowed to have uh in their diet really so yeah cancer cells can feed on all kinds of stuff they feed on cholesterol uh, they feed on fat but it's not, it's not, you know, what the thing is, you don't need to think about that, think about it in that way. Like what the square one method is not about starving cancer cells. It's about nourishing the body, right? It's about repairing, regenerating, detoxifying, supporting and boosting your immune system and helping your body work right. Because a body that works right is, is going to have a strong, healthy immune system that identifies and eliminates cancer cells. That's what your body does. That's what it's been doing your whole life until recently, if you have cancer. So, um, yeah, I'm not into, you know, I'm not really into like trying to kill the cancer or starve it. I'm just trying to heal the body. Let the body take care of it. Okay. Looking for questions. Someone says, talk more about eggs. I don't know. What else can I say about them? Go to nutritionfacts.org, put eggs in the search bar, and magic will happen. It'll change your life. <clears throat> okay. Oh, great question. How do, okay. Uh, Janine says, how do we deal with lack of good organic produce in a small town in Canada? It's often non-existent or questionable. Okay, so uh, eating fruits and vegetables that is that are not organic is still better than not eating them, right? The benefit still outweighs the risk. So best case scenario, organic. Next best case scenario, tons of fruits and vegetables that aren't organic. So 
I just would don't worry about it. Like just try your best to get organic. You know, if there, maybe there's some organic farmers you don't know about and you need to kind of beat the bushes and find a local CSA and really get out there and try to figure out like who's doing what. Cause you may be surprised or maybe some organic farmers around you, around your area that you could get more organic produce from. But a worst case scenario, just eat lots of fruits and vegetables. They're still wonderful and they will still feed and nourish your cells and give you all kinds of good stuff. And, um, you know, again, like I said, the benefits outweigh the risks. <clears throat> um, this is a weird one. John said, after being diagnosed with prostate cancer, my doctor said I can't donate blood. Well, you can <laughs> like if you're talking about donating blood just to shed excess iron from your body like just for the sort of health benefit of uh, donating blood you just go to the blood bank and you say yeah i want you to take my blood and throw it away <laughs> you know what i'm saying just take a little out and then toss it so i mean you know uh, there's always ways around stuff like that okay um questions i already answered so i'm just scrolling up Someone said he doesn't eat soy. Yes, I do. I eat soy. I eat soybeans. The beans are great. Organic beans, all types. I eat them. Okay, next. Uh Chris, you said you juice 64 ounces of juice for the whole day. I did when I was healing cancer. Now I just have like about a juice a day, maybe 16 ounces. Um, uh, is it okay to refrigerate and drink later? Yes. Yep. It's great. It'll even stay fresh two or three days. Okay. So don't don't feel like you have to just drink it all at once. Just the best thing to do, make your juice, put it in a mason jar, fill it all the way to the top as close as you can, screw the lid on, airtight, put it in the fridge. It's going to stay fresh. You'll be great. Just put it in little small, you know, little small mason jars to little 16 ounce jars, 12 ounce, eight ounce jars, and you'll be fine. You know, um, I say this a lot. Don't let the little things get in the way of the big things. So, you know, just get it in your body, get good stuff in your body any way you can. It's going to help you. Uh, don't worry about all the little rules and the, like, you know, that people want to put on you. Uh, don't try to be perfect because that'll make you more stressed and you'll feel like you're never doing it right or that you're not doing enough. And um, you have to accept, believe, do everything that you can and be okay with it. Like that I'm doing enough, right? Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay, I'm actually over time. I'm gonna answer one more. Trying to find a really good one to end on. Someone said, do you eat dark chocolate? Yeah, sometimes I do. Do you make your own almond milk? Nope. Thoughts on alkaline water? I don't drink it. You don't need it. It's a, it's expensive. It's a waste of money. You don't need it. Okay. Um, you just need clean water. Get a Berkey. It's way It's like a tenth of the cost of an alkaline water machine. <laughs> Literally a tenth of the cost. Uh, I'm just trying to do some rapid fires here. Uh, okay, here's, okay. The question is, so organic wild meats, poultry, eggs, and clean fish you feel are bad for prevention? Question mark. Yes, I do. Because the, the healthiest, longest living people around the world on all continents with the lowest rates of cancer, the lowest rates of heart disease, the lowest rates of diabetes, the lowest rates of Crohn's, colitis, um, did I say Crohn's? Yeah. Um, cholesterol, name a Western disease. Eat, they eat plant-based diets. They're not pure vegan, but they eat plant-based diets 95% on average. Okay, so yeah, a, a small serving of organic wild fish or, or wild meat or poultry or eggs is okay if it's less than 5% of your diet. Well, less than 5% of your diet means like a couple times a week max, okay? Maybe even a couple times a month is, is better. So the problem is a lot of people are like, 
Oh, you need to eat clean meats. Well, they're eating clean meat three times a day. It's freaking crazy to think about. Well, I know we've been conditioned to think, oh, you got to eat meat at every meal. That's crazy. That is insane. That's a product of industrial agriculture. Our ancestors did not eat meat three times a day. That's what kings ate. That's what the rich people ate. And rich people get rich people diseases. And we're getting rich people diseases. Cancer, heart disease, diabetes, rich people diseases because we eat tons of meat and dairy. So those foods are not an un, they're not unhealthy in a vacuum, right? But they're unhealthy when we eat them at the excessive levels that we're eating them now. So my diet is 98, 99% plant-based. That means I might eat meat once a month, right? Twice a month is like, whoa, like for me, like, whoa, man, party month. I ate meat, meat twice, <laughs> okay? So um, every once in a while, I have a craving and I'll have some, like, you know, wild salmon or whatever, but it's very, very infrequent. And uh, I think, you know, again, it's not just because I have this like weird uh, philosophy. It's because the longest living people around the world with the lowest rates of chronic Western diseases eat that way. So I want to mimic the diet and lifestyles of the healthiest, longest living people. <clears throat> and I think that's what we all should do. I mean, this is the prevention Q&A. So, I mean, what a great one to end on, right? If you want to prevent cancer, you need to imitate the diet and lifestyle of the healthiest, longest living people with the lowest rates of cancers, especially Western cancers, right? In third world countries, they have um, a lot of... Uh, uh, viral type cancers, right? Like liver cancer and stomach cancer, but we're not talking about those. We're talking about the cancers that you get from eating tons of Western food, meat and dairy, breast cancer, colon cancer. Those are the two big ones. And then lung cancer, of course, is caused, the majority of it's caused by smoking. Rates are plummeting for lung cancer because smoking rates are way down, which is great. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, plant-based diet. I mean, it's just got, it's, it's what it's gotta be. It's just gotta be plant-based. Doesn't have to be vegan. Doesn't have to be vegetarian. You don't have to like, you know, join some club or get a newsletter or, you know, get a tattoo, <laughs> right? Like vegan. Uh, <clears throat> but you just need to eat tons of fruits and vegetables, cut the processed food out and cut the animal products way down. Make it a special occasion, okay? If you want to have a steak once a month, it's okay. That's all right. You know, just make it a, a very special, infrequent occasion and where it's not enough to cause you any harm. <clears throat> so thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Um, again, the Square One Healing Cancer Coaching Program is uh, module one still online. You can watch it. There's a link right up there. The, the entire program, all 10 modules, is 50% off until tomorrow night. So and there's a one year guarantee. So for those of you that haven't seen it, if you're like, well, I'm not sure about this, a one year guarantee, like that's what I'm like putting on it. So buy it, get the discount. If you go through it and you're like, this is crazy, you know, fine, we'll give you a refund. Like, it's no problem, you know? But what I, what I know is gonna happen is you're gonna be like, this is awesome, I'm doing this. Plus you'll get in our private support group and you can get on the private live Q and A's and get your definitely get your questions answered. And like you know, I'm only interested in changing people's lives and transforming lives, restoring health, seeing people get well. That's what the course is for. If you can't do it, if it doesn't work for you, if you decide you don't like it, doesn't agree with you, whatever. Like I don't want your money. Got it? Like I don't want it. <laughs> I only want to help you. If I can't help you, I don't want your money. <laughs> so. Uh, I don't know how else to say it, but that's that's my philosophy. I'm just like, I'm not into just like, I'm not out just like sell you a bunch of stuff that you don't need and that isn't gonna help you. That that doesn't make me feel good at the end of the day. So um, anyway, there's a link above my face. Or, you know, just go check it out. Um, you guys are great. Uh, this has been a super amazing, I can't believe we're like, this is the end of the Square One launch, which has been like an insane, and if I wish you knew how much time went into this. It's so, like, Oh my gosh, we've just been going nonstop. And you know, 130,000 people opted in. We had 50,000 people plus watching every night. And like thousands of messages and con my email inbox is like, I'm surprised that it did, didn't just melt down <laughs> because of so many emails. Like I've never had this many emails and I get a ton of emails normally and it's just been completely like a whole new level 
of email insanity. And I've got this amazing support team headed by my like number one lady, Eve Roberts, um, who I there's no way I could have done it without Eve and without the support team. And I just, you know, you know who you are. We'll be talking later. Um, and my, my, you know, anyway, I'm, I'm just like babbling now. I feel like I'm like, I just won an Oscar or something. I don't even know what I'm talking about. And blah. But, um, by the way, did y'all see the Oscars, that crazy thing that happened at the end where they mixed up the winner? Dude, uh, man, <laughs> that was, that was, that was pretty crazy. All right. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Um, this replay will be up tomorrow. So not that any of you care, you've already watched it, but uh, we'll, we'll keep it on Facebook and we'll keep the replay up. It's on YouTube too. So, um, it'll just stay up indefinitely. And, um, yeah. Okay. Talk soon. We'll see you, see you on Facebook. See you on the internet real soon. Bye.